Are you looking to use Zoom for your next event or meeting or webinar and you're a little confused about which Zoom software you should choose, Zoom meeting or Zoom webinar? Well, I'm gonna break down kind of the process that I go through with my event clients when I'm helping them with the pros and cons of using the Zoom meeting software or the Zoom webinar software, and I'll hopefully help you make that decision as well. Before we jump into it, I'm Logan Clements, freelance event producer, and I do wanna remind you to like, subscribe, turn on that little notification bell so you get notified every single Monday when I drop new videos. I'm also the co-host of the Better Events podcast, so you can give it a listen. Wherever you listen to podcasts, we do real tips and tricks for you for event planning, event production, and running your own business, so give it a listen wherever you listen to podcasts. So maybe you've been using Zoom for a while now, or you're new to it, or you're just trying to figure out the differences so that you're more informed when you're helping clients make those decisions, or maybe your own organization is looking to host an event on Zoom and is a little confused about the differences between Zoom meeting and Zoom webinar. All right, so if you've watched a couple of my videos, you know that I'm very pro Zoom. I think it is an easy tool that we're all used to and comfortable with. So if you're looking to host a virtual event, or maybe it's the virtual aspect of your hybrid event, Zoom is a really good tool to use. And so here are some of my key callouts that I do for Zoom webinar versus Zoom meeting. I found with Zoom meeting, it's a great tool if you're trying to really engage your attendees. Maybe you're doing a physical activity. I've done it for like a cook along for a nonprofit event where we have done, had everyone cooking in their kitchens and actually cooking along with a celebrity chef. That's fun for Zoom meeting because we're all on camera and we get to kind of get a glimpse into each other's homes and it's very interactive. Now, I wouldn't recommend that if you were doing maybe something similar to my videos where it's kind of like a one-way stream where I'm just talking at you. Having your attendees on, on video, it's a little boring. You're just looking at their faces. Some people, you know, I've seen people fold laundry or start eating and it can be very distracting to have folks on screen. So if you're trying to engage folks on screen, Zoom meeting is great for that. Zoom meeting also has breakout room features. Zoom webinar does not. So if you have any small group discussions or any reasons to send folks into little breakout rooms and then bring them back together, that is something that you need to use Zoom meeting for. Another thing I love Zoom meeting is it does have one link for everyone, one link to rule them all for both speakers as well as attendees. So it's just one link that you're sending everyone to and then you just control folks coming into your meeting via using the waiting room feature or any of the other security features. And then the last part of it with Zoom uh, meeting I love is you can use it as a paid user, um, you can use it as a free user. I love anything that's free. So there's a little bit, it's in automatically included with any Zoom account, whether you have a basic, a pro, and up and beyond that, you get access to Zoom meeting. So that's a nice part of it is you can host that, especially if you don't have any budget for your platform. That's a great way is to utilize Zoom meeting. Now on the flip side, Zoom webinar, is not a free version. So this is a paid add-on and it's gonna be available if you have a pro subscription or higher. Uh, right now it's about starting about 50 or 75 bucks a month and you can pay for it annually or you can pay for it just for the month. So if you're hosting an event with an organization and they just wanna do this one event this year, you can just buy it for that month. If you are someone who is using Zoom webinar or these virtual events and meetings as part of a strategic year long strategy, I'd encourage you to get the annual subscription so when I said Zoom meeting had a lot of good attendee interactive features, Zoom webinar has some as well, but it actually just has more controls for you as the host into the attendee experience. So you're exactly controlling exactly who they can see, exactly what parts of the chat or Q&A they can see, if they can see how many people are in the meeting or not. These are all controls that you have access to in webinar, which you do not in meeting. So in Zoom webinar, you can actually turn off the participant count, making it so that attendees can't tell if there are 10 people in the meeting or a thousand people in the meeting. They also can only view what you're letting them view versus in Zoom meeting, they can constantly be going between speaker and gallery view on their individual screen. Zoom webinar has you really just control everything they're seeing. But it does then at the cost of that has a couple little less interactive features for attendees. They're not on screen um, because if you turn off that they can't see each other, they can't do direct messaging. So there's a couple more things that I would recommend it really for Zoom webinar is if you're doing something that's one way, kind of a lecture style, it's nice just to keep people off screen. And or if you're doing something for a large group of people, let's say 500, 1,000, 10,000, I recently looked up, it actually lets you go to 50,000. So Zoom webinar is constantly upgrading. So it can really take that high volume and because it has such limited attendee features, you're really protecting yourself from Zoom bombers and any kind of other security risks. 
Um, my big thing I call out though is Zoom Webinar does not have a waiting room feature. So when you hit start webinar, your attendees, you're live. Your attendees just automatically come into your uh, webinar. They do have a feature where you can enable a practice session. And please, 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 if you are hosting a webinar, always check that box. It does not automatically check itself. So watch my video, I'll link it above and below about how to set up your webinar because you wanna make sure this is enabled. Even if you are the single speaker, just so that you can get in, you start your practice session, attendees won't know that you've started yet, but anyone with a panelist link will be able to join and you can just get set up, situated, share your screen, all that good stuff before you open the webinar. I will tell you nothing is more frustrating as an attendee than sitting there knowing that the host of the webinar was not ready and they just started the meeting anyway or started the webinar anyway. And my final point here is just to remind you that these are just a few of the differences between Zoom meeting and Zoom webinar. It's often what comes up as a part of the either the attendee experience or the uh, speaker experience is what I kind of focus on when I'm explaining the difference between meeting and webinar, the Zoom software. My final caveat for you is just a reminder that you've even heard me do it in this video, but we will call things a Zoom meeting or a webinar and it's happening. A webinar can happen in a Zoom meeting. A meeting can happen in a Zoom webinar. We're just talking about the software, the software Zoom meeting and the software Zoom webinar. You're going to have your clients do it. You're going to do it. Your attendees are going to do it. They're going to call things all different things, but just really make sure, especially if you're scoping out services and doing it the way I just laid it out, where again, you're focusing on the attendee experience, the panelist experience as a way to kind of differentiate between the two services of Zoom webinar and Zoom meeting. I think they're both great tools to have in your toolkit. You don't need to use them that often. I tend to use Zoom meeting way more than I do webinar, but it really does ebb and flow depending on who I'm working with. Uh, some examples of events I've done in Zoom webinar, I've done a virtual press conference because it's nice to have the press is controlled in the chat. And you can also in Zoom webinar still unmute people. So you could still have someone verbally ask questions, but they're not on screen. Um, I've also done them for webinars where it's been about some pretty sensitive information and the clients really wanted to control who's in the virtual room. So Zoom webinars a lot more fitted that for that than Zoom meeting. Um, so just a couple examples of things that you can do in webinar that maybe aren't the best fit for Zoom meeting, but you can still work with a Zoom software tool. And that's it. That's all I have for you folks. I'm Logan Clements, freelance event producer. This has been another installment of my favorite tips and tricks when it comes to event planning and running your own business. If you'd like to learn more about what I do outside of my YouTube videos, you can visit my website at loganstrategygroup.com and I'll see you again in my next video. Bye.